Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Footballin'. It is December 30th, 2017, likely the last show of 2017, and what a marvelous year it has been. We can sit here and go over the Giants' shutout loss in Arizona last week on Christmas Eve to the Arizona Cardinals, where we saw Drew freaking Stanton throw two touchdown passes on this team. We saw Landon Collins get hurt, Sterling Shepard get hurt, Evan Ingram get hurt. It was just one of those games to end this 2-14, and 14, likely, season. Or we could preview Week 17's game against the Washington Redskins in the Meadowlands. But that also sounds pretty stupid, especially with all of the drama in the likes of Kim Kardashian going around the Giants' secondary right now. We could dive into that, plus... We have our new general manager, and I love the pick. I love the fact that we brought in Dave Gettleman. I had the pleasure of meeting him down in Mobile. actually had a nice three-minute conversation with Mr. Gettleman. He was very, very pleasant, and I'm incredibly excited for the future of the Giants. With that being said, (laughs) the Giants are in a really crappy spot right now with an old quarterback. Yes, we're going to have a high pick, and the cap space situation is horrendous but we're going to dive into that after we dive into what is going on with former first round pick Eli Apple and Landon Collins the leader of this secondary so you see it all over ESPN and in the news cycle how did this start so Eli Apple has been having internal struggles with the Giants for quite some time now back when Ben McAdoo was there we saw him be benched and we all thought that he wasn't playing in these games because his mother was going through brain surgery and we thought he was just spending time with him but there was more than meets the eye there so a couple weeks ago let's just back it up a couple weeks Eli Apple denied the fact that Landon Collins said he tried to counsel him, basically kind of take him in as a mentee, be his mentor, and show him the ropes. Landon Co- or Apple denied that after Landon Collins publicly said it. So it was one of those things where it was like, why did he just come out and deny it? What is not meeting the eye here? So then Collins was asked about the secondary group by Bob Wischusen, who was filling in on the Michael K. show, because Landon Collins is an upstanding individual. And I think Landon Collins probably did not use the right terminology in this clip I'm about to play. But let me play the clip, and then we're going to go into my opinion on Eli Apple and this entire situation. Now, you're not going anywhere, and I'm sure that Darian Thompson isn't going anywhere. I mean, you guys never leave the field. Thousand plays this season for Darian Thompson, who's, you know, your partner in crime back there. But there could be a shakeup at corner. And obviously that's been something that's been played out in the media. Your relationship even with some of your fellow guys at corner this year. So I know everyone kind of goes through those exit interviews. This won't be an exit. It'll be an entrance interview because when you sit down with the new general manager and the new coach, there'll be new faces. They'll be bring, But you would be one of the first guys I would bring in because I would want your take on what went wrong with this season. When they ask you, hey, self-scout the year, what went wrong with those guys at corner? Should we bring some of these guys back? If you're going to make a case for some of your teammates to come back, what would you tell the new coach and the new general manager? That was a great question by Bob Wischusen, and Collins took the bait. Collins straight up said, Eli Apple is a cancer. Now, I think that is a poor choice of words by Landon Collins because we all know that Annie Apple, Eli's mother, had brain cancer, had a brain tumor, had it removed. So the choice of words was probably a little off on Landon Collins' part. That does not mean Landon Collins is incorrect. Eli Apple is a problem in this locker room. And he is a petulant little 
child. He is the furthest thing from being a professional. All of these things are starting to come out after this horrendous 2-13 and season so far. More than likely going to be 2-14. and The Giants will more than likely end up with the second overall pick. But this kid, Eli Apple, former first-round pick, top-10 pick by Jerry Reese, who's no longer part of the team, he can't be constructively criticized. He's walked out on several team meetings that were meant to constructively criticize the play of the player to enhance his skill set. He's publicly gone against teammates like Landon Collins who have tried to help him out. He tweets a freaking touchdown by his college teammate Rod Smith during the Giants game when the Giants are playing the Cowboys, the team Rod Smith plays for. A, that's against league rules. You're not allowed to do that, even if you are inactive. B, what the hell are you thinking? He's obviously trolling the Giants at this point. There's no way he's this dumb. And then it comes this Wednesday. He refused to work on the scout team. It led to a fight with cornerback coach Tim Walton. And then he's suspended for conduct detrimental to the team. And this is all after, well, at least the Tim Walton altercation is after Landon Collins apologizes for the cancer comment and says, hey, I have your back. He apologized on Twitter. And then it was brought up to Eli Apple in a press situation where there were reporters all around. And all Eli Apple says is, I need to take a shit. That's what Eli Apple says. And then he walks off. So Eli Apple is not mature whatsoever. That is incredibly apparent. He's not trying to better himself on the field. He's making an absolute fool of himself off the field, and he cannot handle this kind of pressure. So the Giants suspend him after the shit comment, after not working on the scout team on Wednesday. And that also is interesting, because by suspending him this game, he's not guaranteed the $9 million if he is cut by the Giants this offseason. He'll only receive four, so that saves the Giants $5 million. Something to definitely pay attention to, because it is a possibility that Eli Apple is cut, but that's yet to be seen. Apple literally said he has to take a shit. That was his response to an apology from his teammate. This is the child that Eli Apple is. And there's one winner in this Eli Apple saga, this mess that's going on. And that is the anonymous scout from the 2016 NFL draft process that everyone mocked and called nuts and called this anonymous scout out for these comments. Quote, I worry about him, talking about Apple, because of off the field issues. The kid has no life skills at all. He can't cook. He's just a baby. He's not first round for me. He scares me to death. That is what this anonymous scout said. And everybody pointed at this anonymous scout and called him an idiot and mocked this guy. This guy was 100% right. He has no life skills. I don't know if he can cook or not, but you know what? He can't be a professional. He can't act in a professional manner. This is a 22-year-old kid. And this is why John Mara, Giants co-owner, does not want to move on from Eli Apples, because he's so young, because he does have talent, and because the Giants have invested high draft capita in this individual, despite his petulant nature, despite him being this child that the Giants probably were not sure about when they drafted him. But I will say this, the Giants would not have drafted Eli Apple if Laramie Tunsil did not smoke that weed and it was broadcasted 10 minutes before the draft. If that doesn't happen, Tunsil gets drafted way higher than the Dolphins in the teens, and somebody like Jack Conklin or Ronnie Stanley falls down to the Giants' pick. Maybe the Giants don't get leapfrogged twice because Jerry Reese had stone feet when it came to the draft. They didn't even bring Eli Apple in for an interview. There's no way that that was the person they wanted. They just got caught twice because Jerry Reese was immobile. And the Laramie Tunsil thing did not help because they didn't want to take a risk on that big unknown. I don't blame Reese for that. Just think about it. You're sitting in the green room, and then something comes out that this prospect is smoking weed on the internet. You have no idea why or what what happened, what's going on, what revolves around this pick, so you just skip over him. But he would have been drafted so much higher. It was after the Giants would have been drafted before the Giants, which would have pushed another prospect down to the Giants. Giants would have drafted that individual over Eli Apple, somebody they didn't even interview. So that doesn't get brought up that much, but that's something I always think about. Damn butterfly effect. But Mara says this on the Eli Apple saga. 
I think new general manager, Dave Gettleman, said it well. This is a quote, by the way. You don't want to quit on talent. I think that's a discussion we have to have in the offseason. He's a young guy. I happen to like him personally. I'm obviously disturbed by what's happened this year. I thought he had a terrific training camp, and I was really excited about him as a player coming into this season. So I think we have to figure out just what's going on with him. But I like, at the end of the day, for him to be part of this team's future. But I think that's going to have to be a discussion with whomever the next head coach is and Mr. Gettleman as well. So it's going to be yet to be seen what they're going to do with Eli Apple. It looks like we're setting up to part ways with him. I don't think there's any room for this kind of immature, unprofessional acts on a football team. I do realize John Mara did invest first-round pick in this individual. You want to see what's exactly wrong with him. You want to see if a change of scenery, a new coach, a new general manager will change him. And I'm fine with that. But if it doesn't, I don't want to take any more risks. Cut this kid. He's not worth it. He obviously has absolutely no care to be a New York Giant. And he's shown that time and time again by trolling this team on Twitter and social media and things of that nature. Landon Collins comes out like a man, apologizes, says, hey, I'm just looking out for you. And Eli Apple responds with he needs to go and use the bathroom, only in a much more Krause way. So Eli Apple, I'm done with him. You can cut him. That's fine. I can understand why Mara wants to try to wait it out to see if there's anything else. There's really no harm in that other than the fact that if it's training camp preseason, he's still acting like this. There's no reason for him to be on this roster. He needs to prove and earn his keep, not just because he is a high pick. And that was something that Jerry Reese struggled with. He would keep people on the roster who sucked and just barely got by because he invested high draft capital in them. I don't think this is going to happen now with our man Dave Gettleman. In charge. Now, I like Dave Gettleman. I've said this. I've seen a lot of Giants fans come out with this initial impression that, oh, Dave Gettleman, it's just the same kind of hire. He's just going to be status quo for the Giants. Well, if you looked at the news this morning, I think you would be wrong, Mr. Typical Giants fan. Dave Gettleman cut ties with Mark Ross. He cut ties with Bobby Hart. A little background on Dave Gettleman. Let's go back to his Carolina years. In his four seasons from 2013 to 16 as Carolina. Carolina Panthers general manager, they won 40 games. He was there for three NFC South titles. He built a Super Bowl roster that went to Super Bowl 50 and almost won that Super Bowl. They were 15-1 in 2015. Gettleman was named the NFL Executive of the Year in 2015. And prior to joining the Panthers, Dave Gettleman Spent 15 years with the Giants as a personnel executive. He was on the staff that won Super Bowl 42. He was on the staff that won Super Bowl 46. Two of the seven Super Bowls Gettleman has been a part of in his 30-year NFL career. He was a part of these Super Bowls. And people want to sit here and criticize this hire because he used to be with the Giants. They think it's going to be the same way as Jerry Reese. That's not accurate. I don't buy into that. I think this is a much different individual, and I'm excited about the prospects of what lie in the future. Let's go over some of his notable draft picks. Again, he wants to focus on the trenches. He did that in Carolina. He drafted Star Lotolele. He drafted Kawan Short, two of the better defensive linemen. Kawan Short, one of the best three techniques in the league. Drafted Devin Funches, big body, fit his quarterback profile in Cam Newton, who likes to overthrow the ball a lot because he does. Same with Calvin Benjamin, another big-bodied receiver. Cam Newton has a big arm. Throw it to those big bodies. They've had success doing that. Shaq Thompson, somebody who was supposed to be the replacement for Thomas Davis. We'll get into that a little later. Christian McCaffrey, Trey Turner, Curtis Samuel, James Bradbury. These are all draft picks. Solid players for the Carolina Panthers. And people point, well, why was he fired then? Well, if you ask me, he was essentially fired from the Panthers because he was doing his job. He got fired for doing his job as a general manager. And what I mean by that is his handling of these aging players' contracts, the trait that helped him drag the Panthers out of cap hell, started to wear thin on the veterans in the locker room and owner Jerry Richardson. And the owner Jerry Richardson sided with the players over his general manager. That helped him stabilize the cap, maintain a Super Bowl caliber roster. 
sided with the players. And we've seen players come out and just absolutely eviscerate Gettleman. Because the players did not like Dave Gettleman. Because he did his job. His job is not to be a fan of the players. His job is to maintain a Super Bowl competitive roster. And he did that. 34-year-old Thomas Davis' contract was the last straw that broke this camel's back and led to Gettleman being fired. Because, like I said before, Gettleman drafted Shaq Thompson to be his replacement. Thomas Davis, 34 years old, plays well. He's going to be looking for a pretty sizable contract, though. Has multiple knee injuries. It's a cutthroat business, being a general manager. And Gettleman's job, again, is not to make friends with these players. It's to win football games. Put the roster together that can win these football games. And this is why players like Steve Smith, Josh Norman, D'Angelo Williams all hated Gettleman. And when he was fired, they came out on Twitter and were just mocking him. It's because Gettleman didn't think their age or what they could get on the market fit what he was willing to pay for his franchise and what they were trying to do. They all took it personally. But it is football, and that is just business. And you could see Gettleman kind of alluded to this in his press conference a little bit. You know, as young kids, and you, you know, you talk to them about becoming a pro, and you know, you've got a finite career, and and you, you talk about those things, and they and they develop, and then all of a sudden they, they're ready to hit their, you know, they want the big the big uh, contract, and they throw it right back in your face. Well, Dave, I got a finite career, Jack. I got to make it now. You know, so. You know, you, you get that. It's listen. At the end of the day, that's something I got. I got. You got to manage a cap, and, but but really and truly, Mike. Before that, and it's what players don't want to hear. They don't want to hear the value you put on them because it hurts their feelings. And that is exactly the point. They do not want to hear the value that you put on them as a general manager because they think maybe rightfully so in their minds because I'm sure they're all alpha males, but they think they're worth more. And Gettleman isn't going to overspend on somebody who, you know, might have done well for you in the past, but might be on the back end of his career now. He's not going to overspend to keep you. And he did that with D'Angelo Williams and Steve Smith. And I agree with that from a football standpoint. It makes sense. And I know Giant fans, some Giant fans out there do not like Gettleman because he has this negative connotation towards the, from the way the players feel about him. That doesn't bother me at all. Put together the best roster. Win football games. That's what his mindset should be. And that's what his mindset is. And thanks to Gettleman, the Panthers' three most important players, Kawan Short, Luke Keekley, Cam Newton, are all locked up through 2020. And the team still has plenty of cap space to build around these foundation-type players. We know Gettleman loves him some defense. Kawan Short, Luke Keekley, great place to start. Cam Newton, great quarterback to have. Just compare it to 2012 before Gettleman got there. Panthers' three highest paid players then was lineman Jordan Gross, defensive end Charles Johnson, and running back D'Angelo Williams. And the team had $6 million over the cap at that point. And they finished sub-500 that year. So Gettleman can manage a cap. He's done it before. And yes, he's 67 years old. That doesn't bother him at all. He's going to come in and kick ass. We know that. And one thing that kind of struck me a little... That's something I didn't remember from Mobile, at least, was his thick Boston accent. He had one hell of a Boston accent in that press conference, in his opening press conference. So good for him. But that's just something that um, something that kind of took me by surprise. But on to the crux of the press conference. He spoke a lot about the importance of communication, the importance of leadership, team building, and one thing that all Giants fans would love to hear and he said it we will build the trenches Tom said it to me Tom Coughlin said it to me uh, my first year when he, his first year he came in here he said big men allow you to compete and that's really just so true but, you know the O line and the D line I'm a big, I believe in the hog mollies we've had some great groups here had great groups everywhere I've been and we're going to get back to that um, they do allow you to compete. In terms of building the entire roster, you're going to use every avenue. You're going to build through the draft. You're going to use trades, waiver wire, transitions, walk out, fumble. Excuse me. And he dropped his water at that point. Hopefully, people on the roster will not be fumbling. But yes, you can see, he uses 
terms that are very specific to him hog mollies and things of that nature he has a personality he was engaging with the media something that jerry reese was criticized for but that's not why i'm judging reese i judge reese on the roster that he put forward which was devoid of talent especially along the linebacker position on the offensive line and really it was just took free agency to fill up that talent and that's why we have a lot of cap issues right now as well and i bid farewell to jerry reese but it was time for a change and dave gettleman Looks like he could be this change. He talked about what he looks for in a head coach. He compared the head coach to the CEO position of a business. He says that you need to be one of the smartest people in the room at all time. You need to be the smartest. You're never the dumb dumb in the group. He says toughness is very important when he thinks about head coaches. Every successful head coach I've been around has been tough. Now, maybe the delivery was different, but they were tough and he wants to build up this defense he knows how important defense is he knows how important the offensive line is he wants to get pass rushers to pressure the quarterback he stressed all of these things in this press conference he kind of danced around the odell beckham jr future a little bit i thought he said quote well everyone wants a lot of money Anybody in here not want a lot of money? And he kind of talked like that. Obviously, he's an incredibly talented kid and makes stuff happen. We'll have that. What's that song? Getting to know you. Getting to know you. Well, do that and we'll get to know each other and we'll go from there. He's rehabbing an injury and we'll get to know each other and we'll go from there. He's rehabbing an injury. I haven't had an opportunity to talk about how far along he is. So we will see. He was talking about the doctors. So he didn't really actually address. So that's something that we will pay attention to because, again, we know if he doesn't think that you're worth the money, he's not going to give you that money. So that's going to be very interesting to see how this Odell Beckham Jr. contract situation evolves through the next season. But I'm just excited to dive into this draft process with a new general manager, fresh general manager when it comes to just another mindset. He's not going to overpay on aging stars and this is somebody who also knows the organization at the same time because he's been here before and he just did not waste any time he let mark ross go and that is big news because a lot of people thought it was just going to be status quo like they said that was one of the biggest criticism but this is the this is a big time fire right here somebody he used to work with this is the vice president of player evaluation mark ross he fires this guy literally interviewed for the general manager job last week think about that he interviewed for the general manager job last week and he gets fired today by dave gettleman and gettleman spoke on it i worked with mark when i was with the organization before I have great respect for him and high regard for his work. Clearly, we're going in a different direction, but that doesn't make these kinds of decisions any easier. With that, he also fires, well, fires, he waves right tackle Bobby Hart, somebody who famously, a lot of Giant fans know, says that he was the best right tackle in the league. Yes, he said that, and he was basically benched, had dealt with a couple injuries, but he was basically benched right after that. And it was very, very comical that he thought that he was one of the best in the league. So Dave Gettleman's not wasting any time whatsoever. And now it just comes to who's going to be the head coach of this team. We'll probably won't find out until after the season. We're going to talk a lot about that on this show. Who is going to take over for Ben McAdoo, for Spags? you got names out there like Josh McDaniels, who more than likely will be in the Super Bowl, so maybe he'll interview, kind of like Shanahan did for the 49ers before that. But you got guys like Josh McDaniels. you got names like Jim Harbour out there. you got Bill Cowher's name out there. you got John Cruden's name out there. So there are a lot of names out there. Also, watch Bill O'Brien from the Texans, looking like there might be an unceremonious end to him with the Texans. Him and Rick Smith, their general manager, have been at odds forever, it seems like. And Bill O'Brien would be probably one of the highly sought-after coaches if he is fired. And also look at guys like Steve Wilkes the defensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers. Again, there's a link between Steve Wilkes and Dave Gettleman. He's done a really good job down there in Carolina 
as their defensive coordinator, and the Giants haven't had a defensive head coach since Bill freaking Parcells. Now, does that mean anything? Maybe not, but it's something to just bring up. I'm just throwing names out there. We will do a whole show on actual potential fits for the Giants and who I think would be best. I want an offensive head coach personally, somebody who can really turn this offense around. I know Sean McVay, what he did last year for the Rams, he goes over there and absolutely turns that whole team around. A lot of people are trying to replicate that. So who's the hot young coordinator? Is it Jim Bob Cooter over there in Detroit? Who is it? And we're going to discuss that in length. But as of right now, Gettleman's making moves, and I'm looking forward to the future. He has a lot of work to do because the Giants are in cap hell right now. Now, they are dead last in the NFL when it comes to the cap, and that's something that we all need to really pay attention to. Hopefully, Gettleman can do what he did in Carolina, shed cap, and he's talked about Eli Manning in the future. Now, Eli Manning would be the biggest cap hit because he has the most money on the cap, but Eli Manning, Gettleman mentioned, he's not opposed to working with him in 2018, him being the quarterback of the Giants. So still some unanswered things. We don't even know who the head coach is yet. Let it all evolve a little bit. But just today, he's making moves, and that is interesting to see. It's going to be an exciting offseason for the Giants fans, which is kind of a relief because the season has been far from exciting. So I'll leave you with this from Dave Gettleman when asked about his old age and how he's going to handle his job. But this is Nick Filato. After this, I'm logging out here. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Just check out this final quote by Mr. Gettleman. So, and I'm with the AP. Since I'm a little older, like some other people, I mean, is this a caretake position you're taking, or are you looking 10 years down the road? Is What's your plan? Tom, my plan is to come in here, in, in here every day and kick ass. That's my plan. Okay, and I'm going to keep doing it until they either take my key card or the Lord calls me home. Coming here every day and kick ass. I love it. Alrighty, guys. I hope you guys enjoy week 17 of meaningless football for the Giants, at least. And let's at least evaluate some of them players. You guys have a great time. Ta-ta now.